All right, good morning, everybody. Driving through what uh, Weird Al Yankovic would call an Amish paradise here. Um, on my way to Elizabethtown, Pennsylvania. I'm going to be passing through Hershey, Pennsylvania, which is usually somewhere, we usually go to Colombia and Sukkis, although we haven't gone, uh, not last year, not, not recently. And um, I see the sign here, it says up here, Hershey. Uh, it reminds me, there was one episode where um, of The Simpsons where Lisa suspected that Homer had converted to Islam, and she said, we, I saw you praying toward Mecca, and, and uh, Homer said, if I, if I ever would pray to a city, it would be Hershey, Pennsylvania. <laughs> so I think that's what he said. Maybe I'm wrong. That's what I seem to remember. So anyway, I want to continue this discussion that we were having yesterday. It got a little bit more heated, but, uh, the Twitter discussion with, with my friend Rabbi Kotkin um, discussing this question of you know where do we have this phenomenon come from that what I the way I word it is that there's that Judaism and Christianity are bought, uh, or, or conflated, that, that Christianity is conflated to be a form of Judaism um, in the eyes of certain you know, missionary groups and so forth. And how, you know, we have to look at ourselves, how are we at fault? Is there something that we've done as Jews that has encouraged or justified such a, a ruse. And this is, again, this is not to be disrespectful to Christians, but it's just to point out that there is a clear difference between Judaism and Christianity. And the question is, you know, we have to focus on ourselves, that what, you know, there always has to be the cheshman and nefesh, like Rabbi Kotkin said. We have to look at ourselves and ask ourselves, what have we done that has more or less allowed such things to, to come about in the world? And are we in any way responsible for this? You know, I, I, it's unfortunate that I even have to mention this, but I absolutely do not believe. I'm not a Christian, and I don't believe in, in the ideas of Christianity. Uh, but I have studied some of these ideas, and I'm familiar with some of these ideas. Uh, and, I, I, and I do have respect for Christians, even if I disagree with them. But the thing is, is that I feel that it should be, there, there are very, it should be clear that there are, there exist very clear differences between Judaism and Christianity. And they are two totally separate religions, you know, and just because the founders of Christianity were Jews doesn't make it, doesn't make Christianity a form of of Judaism any more than the fact that Muslims have Jesus as a prophet it, does that, that thereby make Islam a form of Christianity. It isn't. Islam is not Christianity. It's not a form of Christianity. It's not a branch of Christianity. It's a separate religion. And uh, so too, you know, many Christians would say the same thing of the Mormons and the Jays Witnesses and others, that they don't accept some of the basic ideas of little old Orthodox Christianity. I don't, when I say Orthodox, I don't mean to exclusively, you know, speak of Eastern Orthodoxy, but I'm saying with a little O, 
you know, the ideas of, say, the Nicene Creed that are generally understood that uh, that's what makes one a Christian and one doesn't, if one doesn't accept those, perhaps most Christians would say that it's not within the realms of Christianity. And that being said, uh, there are you know, groups that have Christian roots just like Islam that leave in a certain sense the According to most churches, although they would self-identify as Christians, Muslims do not never self-identify as Christians. But Mormons and Jay's Witnesses and so forth, who are non-Trinitarian, do self-identify as Christians. Uh, you know, and then of course there's going to be all of these different. kinds of groups that exist. Excuse me. But the thing is, is that, you know, nobody has a problem to say that Islam is not a form of Christianity. Mormons, even if they agree that Mormons are nice people. In a quarter people, mile, continue straight onto Lottermilk Road. They don't find it offensive to say that Mormons are not Christians. And Catholics believe that. There are others, you know, most, most Protestants will say that because the beliefs of the Mormon Church are, are radically different. They, it's it's no longer a type of Christianity. So therefore, we are totally justified to say that certain things are not a form of Judaism. The question is, you know, where do we draw the lines? What what lines do we draw to say Continue this straight onto Lottermilk Road. One's religion is no longer Judaism. You know, where where do we draw the line? So, and, and to me, if someone is going to say that they'll accept in 1,000 feet, where am I going? Turn right. Turn right. If someone is going to accept an atheist as practicing a Turn form right. of Judaism. And not accept. In a quarter mile, turn left onto East Mansion Road. Someone who, uh, who, who uh, let's say, they don't accept the Nicene Creed. Uh, but they, and they don't worship Jesus, but they view Jesus as as a, some kind of a messianic figure, however they understand that to be. So then, you know, again, where does that... Turn left onto East Mansion Road. You know, where does that fit in if someone, you know... If, if we can, if we can accept the uh, what they call the humanist Jews in a quarter mile, turn right onto St. Chocolate Avenue as a form of Judaism. Uh, so then, what point do we distance ourselves from from the Messianics? Who, to be honest, we have more in common with Christians than we have with atheists of Jewish heritage. Uh, and so, with plain Christians, you know, totally Gentile Christians, we have much more in common as Turn right up, chocolate to do with, 
with atheists who just who happen to have been born with some kind of Jewish heritage, even if halacha would recognize them as Jews, so to, to mean the point where that it means that they're required by Judaism to return to the Jewish faith as, a, as opposed to just being welcome to do so the way a Gentile is, the, the Jew is required to, to re-adopt Judaism if, uh, you know, if they leave, if they leave the faith. But, you know, you know this uh, the movement that Sherwin Wine uh, invented, this humanist, how is, how is it? In 1,000 feet, turn left. How is it okay that, that, uh, How is it okay that we we use this name? Turn left. It's over here, I think we're turning left. No, I don't think so. I think I, I was supposed to turn left there. No, I went too far, didn't I? In 1,000 feet, turn left onto Coco Avenue. Where do we derive that you know this this is a form of, of Judaism and this is not? I mean, clearly, humanist Judaism is much further away from Judaism than than any messianic, even the most Christian, quote unquote, messianic Judaism. What they quote unquote call humanist Judaism is much worse. So why? You know why would we accept that and not this? And 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 I would venture to say that the the secular Zionism, is, you know, that says that you know the the early secular Zionists they said you know that it's not a truly a Jewish state until you have Jewish thieves and and and, and prostitutes and whatever. Isn't that much worse also than the than the humanist Judaism? And yet many. Even religious Jews and certainly traditional Jews see them as see the secular Zionists as some kind of great heroes, and so essentially that's why we are guilty. Essentially, that's our guilt by accepting these aberrations. How can we not accept the other aberrations that are much closer to us, that are much... I'm not saying they're more kosher, they're all equally trafe. But Turn left onto Coco Avenue. But by virtue of the fact that we've accepted... This is, again, this is going much further than reform conservative. Uh, you know, conservative, there's what to Continue say, for 10 miles. That there, there is a, a certain level of, you know, that the, the conservative uh, could self-identify as somewhat of a, a halachic, um, you know, group. There is what to even justify the conservative. Uh, we can argue with them, but there is, there is, and, and, and the problem is though that they've gone further away, conservative has gone, you know, you have, you know, different factions within the conservative movement, some are halachic and some are not halachic, essentially, um, you know, I mean, the politics of uh, mechitza is not really as much of a halachic issue as it's, uh, and even certain, certain aspects of egalitarianism can have certain level of halachic Justification that uh, you know, and, and, and these are the types of things you know we have to ask ourselves. You know, where do we draw the line? But. Uh, Reform obviously is not a halachic movement, but they don't claim to be a halachic movement, and they 
you know, they have a lot of issues. Uh, but still, in general, the, the modern Orthodox and the conservative ha have a certain level of fellowship with the reform. And my approach is, I recognize it as a fact that there's nothing I can do about as much as I disagree with the reform and conservative, there's nothing I can really do about it. They're not going anywhere. Um, as much as they are going somewhere, but they're, they're, right now I'm talking, at, at the moment, they're not going anywhere. So, the same thing every other religious movement, you know, we can disagree with them, but it's, we're not going to get rid of them, and that's fine, and I think there's a certain good aspect of that, there's something positive of that. We have to recognize the fact is we're not changing the world. You know the world is. You know we have we have to focus more internally and. You know, but the fact of the matter is, is like I said, by virtue of the fact that we have accepted <coughs> all of these total aberrations whatever it is, you know, the same thing, it, you know, it's a good question when a Christian missionary asks, why is it that a Jew is comfortable with the Jubu, with the Jewish Buddhist, and not the Jewish Christian? It's a good question. It's a very good question. Uh, and, and, the, you know, and the answer is either we don't accept anything on a certain level, except in the, the we can accept on the level of just pragmatism and, and recognizing that these these things exist and, and there's nothing we can do about it and have and still have fellowship, you know, perhaps like the same way that you know we're describing, you know, how how Catholics view Mormons. Catholics don't view Mormons as fellow Christians the way that they view uh, Protestants as fellow Christians because their theology is different. That doesn't mean that they hate them, and so too, there's a certain point where we can recognize the same thing, that we don't have to hate people that we disagree with, uh, don't necessarily have to love them either, we don't have to hate them, uh, doesn't mean we can't love them, but, you know, we don't necessarily have to. the type of questions we have to ask ourselves. Are we responsible? Can we justify if we, if we include in our uh, milieu of what's, you know, who are part of the Jewish world, who are part of the Jewish You have a Jewish community center. You have a Jewish federation. It's not sectarian, but it's Jewish. Do we have a true justification for not including, if we include the reform of the conservative, the orthodox, of course, and the uh, and we maybe include also the humanists, and we include the, the Jewish Buddhists. We include the secular Zionists. Do we have any justification not to include the, the Messianics? Where where do we draw the line? How do we decide where to draw the line? Now the answer could be: Well, the Messianics <coughs> are actively missionizing. Well, let's say they're not. 
let's let's say, you know, the issue is the missionizing and not the theology. If they had it, if they had the theology without the mission, what would be the what would be the the, the ramifications for that? So forth. These are the questions we have to ask. And, and to be honest, they're not. They're not easy answers. The, the easier answer would be to say we don't accept any of these groups. And that's why, you know, the more Haredi Orthodox are the most intellectually honest, in my opinion, because they don't accept any of them. They view the Reform and, and even the Conservative in many cases. Although... Again, there could be arguments on both sides, but certainly the reform and the secular and that they reform and, and the Jew booze and whatever else, they view them exactly as they view the Jews who convert to Christianity. And so, therefore, there's we can say we don't we don't accept you. We don't. You're not. not part of our religion. And, and you can go, you have freedom of religion to go do what you want, but we can say you're not part of Judaism because we say the reform also not part of Judaism. intellectual dishonesty. But if we embrace the reform, how can we not embrace the the the, uh, the messianics? You know, I remember Dan, Daniel Lappin, Rabbi Daniel Lappin, he's on the side of the a good orthodox rabbi, was very good in the office. Um, although certain things they could question, certain, things, certain parts of his approach, but Nonetheless, of finding in your mind. Um, he asked a very good question. You know, he said, uh, "He said, how is it that you know when you have a salute to Israel parade, you see they let the gay temple, like the gay synagogue, march, and they won't let the Jews for Jesus march. And and if someone's going to say, well, you know." That's that. You're, you're discussing some something in Leviticus. Who cares about Leviticus? This is the Ten Commandments. You should have no other gods before me. So they say, "Oh, you want to talk about the Ten Commandments? So what about so what about Shabbos? You all drive to Shul on Shabbos." So I mean, it's it, it, it's not a hundred percent intellectually honest, but it, it's more intellectually honest than the other way. And he's right. That's, um, but that, that's in general. Then we get to a smaller issue. On a, this, this of Chabad Messianism, which is really what triggered this whole thing. Obviously, so 
these people are obviously lacking some basic common sense. But the same thing could be said about people who believe that Lubavitch Rebbe is Mashiach. That they're missing some basic common sense. But even they don't have common sense. They're from their Shabbat Shabbos, and they don't worship a Vodazara. So there's a tshuva from, uh, from, from Rav Feldman, a very famous tshuva. Others disagreed with Menashe Klein, Zechat Sadak Lebrachko. He disagreed very vehemently, and he said that no, the, the Messianic Chabad are Chutzel Machina totally, but the. the um, Rav Feldman from, from near Israel, he said, no, he said, they count for a minion, their wine is kosher, their shechit is kosher, but you can't have someone like this as a Mara because they're obviously missing out on some basic common sense. If they, uh, you know, and even, like, uh, Feldman points out very wisely. He said, even if Louis Sir, we want to accept the Gemara and learn it that way, learn shot in the Gemara and Sanhedrin. When the Gemara and Sanhedrin says um, that if Mashiach come, would come from the dead, he would be Moshe Rabbeinu or Dov Melech, whatever. It, 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 that Gemara is not saying that that Mashiach could come from the dead. Or that he will come from the dead. I'm just saying if he would come from the dead. But they're saying if he's going to come from the dead, he's going to be someone from uh, at least 2,500 years ago, if not earlier. Not gonna, if, if, if Hashem is already going to do Tchis Amesim for Mashiach, he's going to bring back my Shrebein or Dov you know what I'm saying? Is it not going to be someone from from 20 years ago, 25 years ago. That's the point. Um, so I don't know what else. I don't know what else to say. You know, but but that being said. So, I, I remember, as a bacher, I, I spent Shabbos in Kfar Chabad, and they said to us, they said, uh, it, it, this, is, this is exactly what they said, I remember. They said, we don't, we don't, you know, people could ask, how is it that Yibaba Treb is Mashiach, in a quarter mile, turn right onto Pennsylvania 230 West, North Market Street. Is any, uh, it's not the same as, as Christianity. And the, and the answer they gave is like this, they said the difference is, Lubavitch Rebbe was a tzaddik, and, 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 and uh, uh, Yeshua Naitri was, was a Russia. You know? But they said, but you have to accept if the Gemara says this. Turn right onto Pennsylvania 230 accept, West, this is what North Lubavitch Market Street. Said, you have to accept that, that Mashiach could come from the dead. And if you want to believe, this is exactly what they said. You want to believe that the Lubavitch Rebbe is Mashiach? Fine. You want to believe the Ben Yishchai is Mashiach? Fine. You want to believe the Shlomo Karbach is Mashiach? Fine. If Rachman wants to learn. But, uh, I mean, this is what they told us in, in, uh, and, <laughs> In half a mile, you will arrive at your destination. Uh, the thing is, is no, it's, uh, 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 that's not really an answer. Because first of all, all right, so we believe that Yeshua Nosri was a Russia. Uh, Christians obviously believe he was a perfect Sadik. 
and, and, the, and I'm sure these, whatever, these messianic groups, they don't believe he's a Russia. He, all right, so they're mistaken. Hitaka was a Russia. But, uh, so what? The, you're not going to convince them this, and, and the thing is, that if they're making a mistake... You've arrived. So where, where, where is this place? So, so you're all, you know, the Lubavitch is also making a mistake. Supposed to be here? I don't know. All right. I have to... Uh, oh, this is it, I think. So I'm here where I'm supposed to be. Um, but the thing is, is that this is what happens. If you're going to... You know, if you're going to do this, this is what you're going to do. This is, this is, if you're going to accept... Lubavitchers who believe the Rebbe's Mashiach. All right, we want to talk about the ones who don't believe the Rebbe's Mashiach. It's, it's a miyat shebemiyat who don't believe the Rebbe's Mashiach. The only difference between the Mashiachist and the non-Mashiachist generally are the Mashiachist say the Rebbe's Mashiach and the non-Mashiachist don't say the Rebbe's Mashiach. That's the only difference. There's no other difference. And then you have a few, you know, very uh, fine you know, uh, idealistic Balei Tshuva, you know, who, who don't think that the Rebbe is Mashiach. But, uh, but uh, it's a miyut shebe miyut. Oh, this is student parking. All right. This is also student parking. Um, but, uh, so, uh, but also this whole idea of the Nasi Ador, even if you don't accept the Rebbe's Mashiach. But this idea, the Nasi Ador, that's a, that's a shtus. That's a, a, a real major shtus to say that there's such a thing as Nasi Ador. I don't mean that to say that there's a Nasi Chabad. All right. You, you could be the Nasi of Chabad without being the Nasi of Klal Yisrael. <laughs> But to, but to say that Bismana is there when we don't have a Sanhedrin, that there's a Nasi Ador, there's no such thing. It's a, it's a shtus. It's totally idiotic. Um, even without the Mashiach issue. And, and, and in a certain sense, that's, that's the, the bigger problem with Chabad. You know, how they, they have utter disrespect for everybody else. The kinds of lushinus that they say against Rabbi Aaron Kotler, against against the Chazanish, against against the whole litany of Gedal Yisrael, and, uh, against the Mishnah Brewer, that, that so so that's basically what I have to say. I thank you for watching. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe. Comment. I'm going to put on Talos and Tefillin now quickly. I haven't already without it, but uh, I have about a half hour until I have to be where I have to be, and I'm here. So uh, thank you, and all the best. Take care.